All right, 10.5 notes on polar area. We're going to look at area enclosed by polar curves. And notice that we're looking at enclosed area, not the uh, not under like we typically have in um, these types of area problems. Uh, these problems work a little differently in polar coordinates. And here's a sketch of the area that we'll be finding in this section. Um, uh, the formula for or this section here. The formula for polar area is different from uh, all previous area formulas because it is not based on rectangles. Instead, polar area uses an infinite number of uh, sectors to find the area. Uh, remember that a sector is just like a kind of like a slice of pizza uh, from the whole pizza. So um, if we think of the area of a sector of a circle, which is given by a is equal to one half r squared theta, or 1 half theta r squared, theta being in radians, then our area bounded by the radial lines from theta equals a to theta equals b um, will be very much built uh, based off of this, which is 1 half integral of r squared d theta. So um, what we you can imagine what's happening here is we're drawing um, uh, these uh, radial lines. Uh, from the pole to a point on the curve. And we can think of each of these as tiny little sectors. Or, um, uh, and then these tiny sectors um, um, are going to add up to be the exact area of this, uh, of this region. So uh, we have infinite uh, number of these um, uh, radial, uh, these area sectors. And that d theta represents that, um, that the angle measure they're infinitely thin um, so that we can find the exact area uh, of this region. Okay. Hey, we're going to need this information as well. Uh, recall these power reducing identities, uh, half angle identities, which we're going to need um, uh, when we find the integral um, where these are going to show up. Basically, we will be trying to, we'll be using this to, so that we can eliminate uh, these exponents of two. Uh, so that we can uh, find the integral of, of our problem. Okay, so we'll come back to this uh, when we need it. So example one, uh, find the area bound, bounded by the graph of r is equal to 2 plus 2 sine theta. Now 2 plus 2 sine theta is going to be a cardioid um, that's going to trace out once from 0 to 2 pi. And 2 plus 2 is 4, that's the outer um, diameter. And 2 minus 2 is going to be 0. So that means that the graph um, is going to kind of bounce off of the polar, uh, off of the, um, uh, the pole or off of the polar 0. And if we graph these order pairs here, uh, 0, 2, uh, pi over 2 will give us 4. And back to 2, 3 pi over 2 is 0. And then 2 pi will give us back to 2. Um, now, we can find the definite integral of this entire, we can find the um, integral of the entire region from 0 to 2 pi, um, which will be 1 half um, r squared d theta from 0 to 2 pi. And uh, we simply, we're simply using the area formula for polar in polar form. Another way that we can do this is we can use symmetry to minimize the distance between the bounds. So um, this is at negative pi over 2. So I can think of this from negative pi over 2 all the way to pi over 2. And then this is exactly going to be half of the entire area. So I can do 2 times this region here. So once I find that region and multiply that by 2, that will also give me the entire area of the region. Okay. Or another way is we can find the area of this region from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, okay, and then double that. Okay. So I think sometimes symmetry may be uh, more convenient, but in this case, I'm going to just uh, uh, go ahead with um, the example from, uh, from 0 to 2 pi. So let's expand this. Um, right now, we can't go through use substitution. There's not enough uh, terms that will cancel out, so let's expand this. We get 4 plus 8 sine of theta plus 4 sine squared theta. 
So you can think of this as writing out the binomial twice and expanding. And we're going to keep going here. Uh, the 4 is a power rule. We have a rule for sine of theta. However, we don't have a rule for sine squared. Right? If we go through u substitution, we're going to be stuck with something that won't cancel out. So we have to utilize uh, these half angle or these uh, power reducing identities to get this exponent to go away. So sine squared of u is 1 half of 1 minus cosine of 2 u. So I can replace sine squared with 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. So now I'm going to keep expanding here. And, um, uh, and the 1 half is still going to be in place here uh, from the formula here. And this goes 4, 4 plus 8 sine of theta. Uh, distribute the 4 and 1 half. I get 2 minus 2 cosine of 2 theta. Okay, so now we're ready to find the integral. We have each piece that we can apply. But let's see. First, the 4 plus 2 can be combined to be 6. Okay, so now I think we're ready. So 6, find the integral. 6 becomes 6 theta. 8 sine becomes negative 8 cosine. Remember, the integral sine turns into negative cosine. And then cosine of 2 theta, if we go through u substitution, the 2 theta will produce a 1 half in front. So if we go through u substitution, we get 2 times 1 half sine of 2 theta. The integral of cosine is sine. So once we found the integral, now we can um, evaluate the upper and lower bounds. So plug in 2 theta in for 2 pi in for all the thetas. And then minus, then plug in all um, the thetas with 0. All the zeros will just cancel out except for the negative 8. The negative 8 and uh, positive, uh, the 8s will cancel out. All the zeros will go away, leaving us with 6 times 2 pi. But we don't want to forget the 1 half in front. So 1 half times 12 pi will be 6 pi. So um, all along this problem, um, you may decide that you want to uh, multiply the coefficient through. Uh, but either way, um, as you can see, there's a lot of shifting uh, coefficients that's going to take place. So um, whatever you decide to do, just make sure you keep track of your coefficients. It's easy to lose track of something, especially um, if we're potentially having to deal with um, symmetry and having another coefficient to deal with. So um, just be careful of that. Okay, let's go to the back. Example two. Find the area of one petal of 2 sine of 3 theta. So we talked about how um, the shape or uh, uh, um, how these graphs will look, right? This will be uh, a rose curve with three petals, because that's an odd number here. So we know that will be exact uh, value and um, a length of 2. And we know that this, um, um, this region will trace out from 0 to pi. It trace out once from 0 to pi. And also, we can use our polar zeros to, and uh, the symmetry will be for later, but not for this one, to create our integral bounds. We know that when the, um, uh, when the curve goes back to the polar zero, um, in this case, it will create one pedal for us. Okay, so um, for zero, if I plug in zero, I get sine of zero, which is zero. Two times zero is zero. Um, but then my next um, polar zero will be at pi over three, right? If I plug, if I choose theta um, as pi over three, I can get the um, three and pi over three to cancel out to be just uh, pi, and no sine of pi will be zero, and two times zero will be zero. So we know at pi over three will go back to zero. So one petal will be traced out from zero to pi over three. So that will give us the bounds for our area. Our area is one half integral from 0 to power 3, r squared d theta. That's the formula. Our r is pr provided by 2 sine of 3 theta. So then we just go ahead and uh, try and expand and evaluate. We get 4 sine squared of 3 theta. And again, we can't go through u substitution. We have to find a way to undo or to eliminate that exponent. So again, we have to rely on uh, power reducing identity. So sine squared of u is 1 half of 1 minus cosine of 2u. Now my u value in this case is 3 theta. So this will turn into 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2 times 3 theta. 
because my u is 3 theta. So uh, then that will give me 4 times 1 half, 1 minus cosine of 6 theta. Um, these will cancel out along with the 1 half to be just 1 minus cosine of 6 theta. 1 turns into theta. Cosine of u becomes sine of u, and then because of u substitution, the 6 will turn into a 1 6, will we'll produce a 1 6. And then I can begin to plug in my upper and lower bounds. Upper bound, pi over 3 minus 1 6 sine of 2 pi. Lower bound, 0 minus 0. So that leaves me with just pi over 3 as my area. Example 3, find the area of one petal of um, 4 cosine of 2 theta. Now, cosine of 2 theta, we know this will be symmetric um, about the x-axis. We know that this is even, so we know this will actually produce four petals with a length of four. So let's see if we can sketch this out to begin with. If we start at zero, cosine of zero will be one. One times four is four, so we know it will start here. Now, the first time that it goes back to zero will be at pi over four. So if I plug pi over four, that'll be uh, my first polar zero. Um, pi over 4 will give me pi over 2. Cosine pi over 2 is 0. 0 times 4 is 0. So when it traces um, from um, angle 0 to pi over 4, you see that this is going to be exactly half of a petal. So I can actually stop here and then just find the area of this region and then just make sure I double that. Okay. And again, um, uh, the reason, the way we can find the polar zero uh, rather than trying to test all the points is we can simply set our equation equal to zero. So 4 cosine of 2 theta is equal to zero. Divide by 4, we get cosine of 2 theta is equal to zero. Um, inverse of cosine will be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, but we still have this 2 theta here. So we have to solve for theta by dividing by 2. Divide by 2, we get pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So the first instance of a polar zero will occur at pi over four. So uh, for this one, we're going to use symmetry. So two times because we need um, we're only this will only produce half of the area of one petal. So now we want to find the area of uh, using the polar form one half integral from zero to pi over four, um, or r squared. R squared will produce um, sixteen cosine of two theta squared. And here, this is this is going to be a um, this is going to be an angle that is uh, cosine that's squared. So we have to revert back to our um, power reducing uh, half angle, which is in this case one half of one plus cosine of two u. My u value is two theta. So I go ahead and make that substitution, and that will give me one half one plus cosine of four theta. And then multiply the 16 and 1 half through. Multiply, uh, I'm going to leave the 8 out. And then just find the integral of 1. So 1 becomes theta. Cosine of 4 theta is sine of 4 theta. But 4 theta will produce a coefficient of 1 fourth. Plug in the upper and lower bound. We get pi over 4 plus um, 0. And then plug in the 0, we get 0 over 0. And so the only term that's left is pi over 4. Don't forget the coefficient in front. 8 times pi over 4 is 2 pi. So the area of one petal is 2 pi because we um, found the area of half and we made sure to double it since we have symmetry about the x-axis.